recently, a, a, a brother contacted me. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to dis- disclose his name or anything. And he mentioned that um, he's been, he had been smoking cannabis for a long time. And he had a lot of trauma in his early life, uh, ma- kind of parental issues. His parents had problems. There was uh, drug abuse and domestic violence. So he had a very difficult upbringing, um, very uh, violent person involved in gangs, um, using cannabis. And uh, he mentioned that uh, he started kind of hearing voices. So we know that there's a link between smoking cannabis and psychosis. It's probably within mental health, one of the clearest associations. And I think maybe in future podcasts, we can talk about it. I, I mentioned, I've done a video on this as well, where unfortunately Muslims minimize, you know, the effects of cannabis. And uh, obviously from an Islamic perspective, it's haram anyway, but it seems like people have minimized it, but it has severe uh, psychiatric consequences. Anyway, so he was smoking cannabis, started hearing voices. And then he mentioned that um, he, he felt that he had Iman. Uh, suddenly he, uh, Iman kind of came into him. Um, he went and saw an imam and he started like feeling that he needs to get closer to Allah. And then he said that he, he started having waswasa that he was uh, Imam Mahdi and uh, subhanAllah. And then he said that he started feeling that he was Isa alayhi salam. And then he said that, that these kind of voices were telling him that, look, if you're Isa alayhi salam, you should be able to f- perform miracles. So he started challenging himself um, and obviously get, getting into uh, a, lot of, a lot of difficulties. Um, eventually he ended up, uh, he became increasingly paranoid. Uh, he ended up going out and basically beating up 10 coppers, 10 police officers, very violently, uh, was arrested. They found that his mental health was, you know, uh, severely, uh, uh, compromised. He was sectioned, uh, and then diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Um, so anyway, he contacted me and I had a kind of a discussion with him. He's now on antipsychotic medication. So this is probably an example. I, th- I personally think, although I haven't formally assessed him, where uh, he had he has both issues. So he was smoking cannabis, and I, I, I hypothesized that he developed a psychotic illness. But then he started becoming affected by by jinns um, who are kind of advising him, and that you know you're Imam Mahdi, you're, you're Isa alayhi salam, and that you know he eventually got to the point where he thought he was Allah. Uh, he he thought that you know uh, he was actually in Jannah and that he was Allah. Um, so this is clearly uh, dark, evil forces kind of uh, taking advantage of a vulnerable individual. Hmm. Mashallah. Jazakallah khair for sharing that. Um, yeah. Just a couple of follow-up questions from yeah. that is, at what stage would you say this probably applies more to those people who are around the um, affected person? At what stage should they seek out like a second opinion or like a, a professional's opinion? What are the like, um, obviously you have like the clear cut symptoms if someone's saying that yeah. they feel like they're Imam Mahdi, but yeah. on a, on a lesser level, where would you kind of draw the line where you'd tell people like, this is the time yeah. you need to go and get an expert's opinion? Yeah, I think uh, it's a very good question, Adil. I would, I ad, uh, advocate early intervention. So we know from the studies, from the literature that the earlier you intervene for uh, a mental illness, the better the prognosis. Unfortunately, because of stigma, especially in the Muslim community, you know, we kind of like have a, a, a stigma within family, within our family system, and then obviously the wider community. So we tend to seek intervention late and we, we tend to kind of cover things up. So I would say that, um, uh, any time an individual starts acting strangely, maybe isolating themselves, any change in personality, you know, isolating themselves, not being as uh, interactive, maybe uh, de- deterioration in sleep, deterioration in appetite, losing weight, um, maybe self neglect, um, telling you that you're, they're feeling depressed, or so. Those are probably the the key issues. And what we say in mental health is, if your functioning is affected, whether that's your kind of physical functioning, your occupational functioning. So if you, if you stop missing work or you're getting uh, to work late or you're having uh, family issues, then these are kind of red flags really to, to seek an expert opinion uh, on, on this issue. Mm, jazakallah khair. Oh, yeah. um, if you could share the two stories, because people love yeah. stories <laughs> as you're, as you're probably aware, mashallah. Um, yeah. 
just uh, I remember that actually when you when you talked about uh, cannabis because yes. I watched that video yesterday and it occurred to me at the time something quite important that you just mentioned that there is I also share the sentiment there's a kind of um, a minimization of it and I think that was yeah. somewhat increased by people like yeah. Joe Rogan and um, others that kind of popularized this um, so-called benefits let's say of like oh you know it helps you relax and all this and i've previously interacted with a brother who used to again th this is the thing like i'm in no way qualified for this at all mm. but i suppose he was just talking to me as a brother um but he would yes. say to me stuff like um i don't see how cannabis can be haram because that's a separate a whole separate matter i guess but mm. and he used to say like if it makes me feel good like i pray more and all this kind of stuff so i think mm. people need to watch that video because you go over like the effects of it and it's links with psychosis and other mental illnesses um yeah but um you can comment on that on that if you if you would like but i'd to go back to my question of if you could share the story mm. about the hafiz quran um that you yeah. assisted recently and also the um African American couple, those two stories, and then we'll kind of bring this, bring the Seher and Black Magic section to an end, inshallah. Inshallah, yeah, jazakallah khair. Yeah, the cannabis thing is, I'm, uh, I'm really kind of fighting against, um, you know, the minimization and legalization of cannabis. So as you know, in the U.S., most states now cannabis is legal uh, mm -hmm. in Canada as well, and obviously Holland. Um, and unfortunately, the Muslims uh, are also affected by this. So there, you'd be surprised, I'm sure, in, in your kind of everyday interactions with friends and maybe friends of friends, even some practicing brothers, they're kind of smoking, <laughs> subhanAllah, cannabis. And they kind of, uh, like you said, they minimize it. From an Islamic perspective, it's very clear, you know, there's no difference of opinion really that it's haram because it's an intoxicant, mm. right? Um, mm. Now, people can try and justify it, but I haven't come across any, um, you know, a credible Sheikh or Alim who said it's, it's halal to, to smoke cannabis, you know, mm. subhanAllah. I mean, even if you look at uh, smoking uh, cigarettes, even that, you know, the strongest opinion, even that's haram. So if, the, if nicotine is haram, definitely cannabis is haram. So that, that's kind of, uh, I think as Muslims, we need to highlight that because there seems to be kind of an issue where people don't highlight this. And, uh, and a lot of the youth, I mean, 10, 11 year old kids are smoking weed and cannabis Muslims. And that's really worrying because of not only the Islamic angle, but also the mental health aspect of it as well. Um, and one study, I, again, in the video I mentioned, uh, shows that if those individuals who smoke cannabis are up to 10 times more likely to develop a psychotic illness compared to those who don't smoke cannabis. So it's really something that people need to be very careful about. Um, 